Hello there. It's so nice to have you join us on this week's edition of Almond Finance and Wealth Report, your one-stop program for all the latest happenings in the world of business. My name is Margaret Mary Lucibor. You're welcome. On the line of this week, first we join Faith in a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with Olola Olabode Ogunlano, the doyen of insurance, who is also the chairman of Skib Nigeria and Company Limited Insurance Brokers. They spoke on a wide range of issues covering professionalism, insurance, religion, and the current state of the nation. According to him, proper underwriting is no longer done in insurance today because non-professionals have taken over the business. Do take a listen. There are so many misfits in Nigeria and insurance is not an exception. Only people who have the risk management frame of mind should go into insurance. There are so many misfits in Nigeria, and insurance is not an exception. Only people who have the risk management frame of mind should go into insurance. On this edition also, we will bring you highlights of the 2018 Annual Lecture of the Chartered Institutes of Bankers of Nigeria, which took place recently at the Bankers House, Victoria Island, Lagos. The theme was of banks and bankers, finance and the challenge of economic development in Nigeria. The guest speaker was Professor Kingsley Mogalu, the former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. In his lecture, Professor Mogalu said that the banking and financial sector is yet to scratch the surface of what they can do to drive inclusive growth. Do take a listen. When they say this man the program, I say, ah, you're now telling me you are the problem with this country. Because every country that makes progress, you have a lot of people blowing around. That is the truth. That is the truth. Plus, of course, all the other extras we bring you each week on this program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup. Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. Do you know if a child, a spouse, a parent, or a sibling depends on you and your income, you need life insurance? A very warm welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you join us in our one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with Olola Olabode Ugulana, the doyen of insurance industry in Nigeria, who is also the chairman of Skib Nigeria Limited. Today we'll be looking at a wide range of issues, starting with um, his very interesting book um, titled Out of the Black Pots and Other Stories, plus, of course, his stints in the insurance industry and other issues. Thank you so very much Chief, for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure being with you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start by asking very uh, interesting title of the book, Out of the Black Pots and Other Stories. Uh, why did you decide to write uh, this book at this time? Well, when I started schooling in 1938, 80 years ago, I grew amidst Christians, Muslims, and adherents of the indigenous faiths. We were very friendly, we were brothers, and everyone was his brother's keeper. Everyone helped the other, and it helped to forge and develop the middle class on which Nigeria was built. But today, it's no longer so. Religion is the worship of God. It's to promote peace and togetherness. Why do we have so many denominations today? When I was young, maybe there were four, five, six. Not even the primates of the Anglican Church can tell you today how many the denominations we have. Even the Islamic faith, we had only one or two. The Ahmadiyyas and 
whatever. But they have now splintered into so many factions. And in the other as, you know, areas of life, they are springing up. I can't understand it. They, they are no longer practicing religion. Religion is the mainstay of the society. Okay, sir, you, you did mention in, in the brief of the book that I read that only practical and responsive religion heals society. Do we have that in Nigeria today? We don't have practical religion. You see, Christianity is a way of life, not just going to church. It's what you do to your neighbor. You put the round peg in the round hole. This official does not need to come from your own tribe. He must get it on merit in the interest of the central body. That is what culture and religion is all about, being fair. We don't have that in Nigeria today. So all this shouting about uh, religion and things, I don't believe it. I mean, when I was young, we had harvest once a year. But now, they have harvest every Sunday. Professional harvest, um, family harvest, um, town harvest, and all, all in the interest of fundraising. Fundraising for what? To take care of the poor in the church? No. They buy planes. The leaders of the church have private planes. And some of them even hire them out to raise more money. What for? Is it making an impact on society? This is why I say religion is a mainstay of society. Okay, but sir, a lot of people would argue that in Nigeria, this is where you find the highest number of churches. As you've just said, uh, you find the largest number of worshippers. And uh, so when you say we are not, as a, as a people or as a society, we are not uh, practicing our religion, a lot of people want to question that. that. What do you mean? I'd be surprised if anybody questioned that. It's so obvious. When your neighbor is hungry and you cannot give him food, and you say you are a Christian, when you are gorgeously dressed and you cannot ask, allow anybody in rags to sit next to you in church. I've seen it in pews, in churches. If somebody comes in that is not elegantly dressed, they will leave their pew and go to the next. And the priest will be there looking at them without admonishing them. I can't understand that kind of society. Maybe because I've lived this long. As the Yorubas would say, but nobody would pray to die. I'm here. I will go only when God calls me. But I'm very sad at what is going on. I've read the newspapers today. I am even more sad than I was yesterday. All the things in the papers. It's unbelievable that this can be happening to Nigeria. Okay, sir. What would you say is responsible for what we're seeing in Nigeria today compared to uh, maybe the 40s and the 50s? Because we are not one. Honest, this is the truth. Let me give you a parable. One day, parts of the body were meeting, and each part was claiming superiority. And the mouth said, I am your mouthpiece. I speak for you, you eat through me, and so forth. And therefore, without me, you are nothing. So shut up. And the hand said, ah, mister, how can you get the food unless I put it in? And the thumb, which is a part of the hand, said, yes, you are to some extent. But without the thumb, can you hold anything? Can you boast? Can you defend? And when the Enos raised up his hand to speak, the mouth said, shut up, you non-entity, who are you? And the Enos shut up. And within 10 minutes, the whole body was uncomfortable. The eye was watering. Even the mouth was wobbling. And the feet wanted to topple. Then the mouth said, oh, was it because of my careless talk? Please, Mr. Enos, open up. Let us have peace. And it opened up. And a lot of gas came out. And everybody was relieved. 
that is the problem of Nigeria. In Nigeria, everybody is a big man. He has to use power without understanding what power really means. Power is intended to improve things, to show mercy, and to make things better. But in Nigeria here is to kill people, to subjugate them, unless we develop a new mindset and believe that God exists, we will never thrive, let alone succeed. Okay, sir. So, uh, part of the book, one of the themes that also ran through the book is the fact that you believe that however a man struggles or whatever he or she does, um, the end result is always what has been predestined for he or she to be. So I'm going to ask you, do you think you were predestined to make a success? in the insurance industry? Well, that I've become a success, I must have been predestined. I didn't want to be an insurance practitioner. I wanted to be an architect. So I did fine at sea level. I did technical drawing. I did physics and all the other things, you know, that was necessary. But I found myself working at an insurance office. People were taking insurance exams. I took it for fun. I did better than those who were doing it seriously. And the bosses saw it, and I was promoted almost every year. Who was I to refuse promotion? And before I knew it, I was given a scholarship to study insurance. I went into the industry in 1952. By 58, I became a manager. By 62, I became a general manager. So God must have preordained it to be so. The Yorubas would say, Ile ni kuwa ni eron ajayi, anyon mokwe, oun de eron lugbo de. No one can change it. Some people, as I said in that book, tried to change it. You saw the result. Ento ba ya yon mokwe pada. Ujwa ali ju mabo mabo lo. Okay, sir. Um, when you started Skip Nigeria, it's 40 years today. When you started the company then, did you ever thought that it's going to growth and get to where it is right now? Well, I have served other institutions for 27 years before I started my own company. And I felt I could make contributions to make it better. I started Skip not with the view of making it better than any other company, but to give service that was professional, to be a role model. And we started doing that. And of course, behind my mind, was the first nursery rhyme I ever learned at Brefoot School. Good, better, best. May I never rest until my good is better and my better is best. And that's what we do at Skip. We like to do it better than any other company. And it's paying off. Okay, sir, if you just oppose that with, you were the first indigenous managing director of Nikon Insurance uh, Corporation, which was the flagship of the nation's um, insurance industry. But sadly today, uh, that institution that gave platform for so many people who ended up being real professionals in the insurance industry, that institution is no more. What, what would you say was responsible or is responsible for that? Well, when you start an eventual, eventual, there must be objectives. You must be aiming at a goal. The objectives for which Nikon was set up, the objectives we set at that time, we followed it when we were there. But when others took up and they veered off the objective, they can't reach the goal that we intended them to reach. So there must be coordination. You must be purposeful. You must be focused. When you make a plan, you must follow that plan. As and when it becomes necessary to modify it, you do that. But that's what we have not been doing. So I'm not surprised that Nikon today is no longer what it used to be. Nikon was the regulator, the reinsurer, the insurer, the role model. It was everything. And we were training staff for other companies, for other countries. Nikon of today is a shell of what it used to be.
All right, welcome back. Moving on now, we'll bring you highlights of the 2018 CIBN Annual Lecture. The occasion was chaired by Mr. Kiari Ababuka, the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Now, while many believe that the banking sector has done a lot, they can still do more to finance SMEs and promote financial inclusion. Happy viewing. The annual lecture of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, is a public lecture that focuses on topical issues in the economy. The annual lecture attracts chieftains of the banking and finance industry, public officials, foreign diplomats, the academia and top executives of the organized private sector. The 2018 edition with a theme of banks and bankers finance and the challenge of economic development in Nigeria was recently held at the Jewelry Hall of the Banker's House, Victoria Island. Kino speaker was Professor Kingsley Mogalu, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. As expected, stakeholders in the banking and finance and the organized private sector turned out in their numbers. Welcoming guests to the lecture, the President and Chairman of Council of CIBA, Dr. Uche Olowu said that creating a better banking system requires a good vision, strong ethical and moral values. Creating a better banking system will require good vision, firm determination, a strong ethical and moral values. Our task, therefore, is to free ourselves from prisons of wrong values, especially greed and avarice. Today's lecture on banks and bankers, finance and the challenge of economic development Nigeria is particularly apt in relation to emerging trends, and I trust it will provide further insight and value to this great country. In his brief remarks, the chairman of the occasion, Mr. Yari Abba Buker, chairman, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, said that the extreme percentage of Nigerians that are poor should be of concern to every citizen. Extreme poverty percentage of Nigeria is extremely high. It should be of concern to each and every citizen. If you can do something about it, please do it. Whether you're a policymaker, a business person growing your business, or whatever, it's something that relates to a lot of other adage that people use. Uh, one being a, a South American priest who said the poor are awake uh, because they are hungry and the rich are awake because the poor are awake. Um, so, so it's an area of concern. The other thing is three, um, three to 3.5%. Three That's the population growth rate of Nigeria. Now, GDP growth, however, is around 2%. Now, that means that every day or every year, if we continue to grow at that GDP rate, we will be poorer. Because the rule of thumb is that you should grow at double the size of your population growth on an annualized basis. Even when we used to have that exciting growth rate of 7% or so for about 10 or 15 years. It wasn't inclusive because our misery index, which is a combination of the unemployed and underemployed, was on the high side. Delivering the theme of the annual lecture of banks and bankers, finance and the challenge of economic development in Nigeria, Professor Mogalu, OON, said that Without the necessary structural reforms in the Nigerian economy, the central bank will not be able to address the root problems. The first is that without the necessary structural reforms in the Nigerian economy, billions of central bank intervention in development finance will not do the job. If you don't structurally reform the economy to address the fact that 40% of the price of goods in this country is mostly made up of generator costs, if you don't address the fact that a significant portion 
of a bank loan repayment that is average of 20 to 25 percent is because the bank is running two generators per branch 24 hours and they must pass on the cost of that generator to the to the borrower these are structural things that must be reformed so if you don't address these things and the central bank is just busy pouring it's ameliorative so it doesn't solve the root problem Expecting nothing less from the keynote speaker, Professor Mugali's lecture was greeted with a standing ovation. <music> Panelists at the lecture this year were Mr. Chinedu Ekudima, Managing Director, Nova Merchant Bank Limited, Mr. Kule Oyinoyi, MD and CEO of Infrastructure Bank PLC, Mr. Aileen Chayan. Founder and CEO, HPSN Associates Limited, Mr. Johnson Chuku, MD and CEO, Kauri Assets Management Limited, Dr. Andrew Nevin, Advisory Partner and Chief Economist, PwC Nigeria, and Mr. Ingo Herbert, Consul General, Federal Republic of Germany. Sharing his thoughts during the panel discussions, Dr. Andrew Nevin of PwC stated that if the real estate sector does not work, nothing else will compensate. Now right now in Europe, interest rates are negative. Our interest rates are over 20%. Why is capital not flowing to Nigeria? Because we have not created an environment where capital wants to come and play a role. And Professor Kingsley talked a bit about the banking sector being underdeveloped at 30% of GDP. In fact, the capital markets are even worse shaped. So the ratio between the uh, market cap of the NSC and the economy is about 7%. It needs to be about 80 percent. People they can't invest in assets in this country. They can't. Uh, they can't help us develop. So, and the single greatest industry that could drive wealth creation uh, and employment, in our view, PwC's view, is real estate. So two thirds of the world's assets are real estate. Everyone needs a place to live. Everyone needs a place to do business, even if you're an internet business. Uh, and if the real estate market does not work. Nothing else can compensate. In his submission during the panel discussion, Mr. Oyinloye noted that Nigeria is far from transformational growth because nothing has changed structurally since pre dependence. The consensus at the end of the lecture this year is that there is need for an audience broadening and deepening of options for financing that can put Nigeria on the path of significant, sustained and inclusive economic growth and transformation. And that is our time on the program this week. Many thanks for being a part of it. Do join us again next week, same time, same station, for a fresh package. In the meantime, feel free as always to connect with us on all our social media platforms. Now don't forget to join us live every Wednesday on Niger FM 102.7 by 9.45 a.m. for our Pigeon English program, Witting Insurance, the Youssef. Once again, my name is Margaret Mary Osiobor. From all of us here, until next week, it's goodbye.